because I had just graduated from college. So I was trying to find myself. I was trying to adapt my life to what he what his life was and what he wanted for my life to be. Mm -hmm. And so I was just going with the flow and then things just didn't work out. And um, I ended up moving back home and it was like I was starting all over again. And Mm -hmm. then I got this job. This is the moment you've been waiting for. I've noticed about you is that you dress so fun. Thank you. I, I think it. it's such an expression of like my personality. Mm-hmm. So I try to make it like my signature. Yeah. Like, hey, y'all, I'm here. <laughs> I keep hearing that. That's like a going theme mm-hmm. from the women that I'm meeting mm-hmm. on this podcast. Yeah. So I follow you on social media. Mm hmm. But I, they going to think we've been knowing each other for 86 years is the way things have seemed to have been going. I love it. It's like everybody that I meet and it's like, oh, girl, I, man, I haven't seen you since high school, girl. I love that. So uh, what you just said about showing up, mm-hmm. Saved in a City is about that. Mm-hmm. I have a girl in my community. You know what I'll shout out? Her name is India. Mm-hmm. And I met her during the pandemic on the, in, on, in, on the internet. Wow. On Instagram. And... We were all in our houses, so I would cook on this, like, woman's... We just made stuff up, right? Yeah. And when we finally came out of hiding, right? Mm Mm-hmm. She talked so much about you. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. And so I followed. I'm like, I wonder if we could ever get together. If you... Mm -hmm. you, Like, do you know a person? She's like, oh, yeah, I know a person. I'm like, shut up. (laughs) So I DM'd you after following you uh-huh. and after trying to create something that I'm noticing that you're creating. Wow. And that you've been creating. Talk to me about Saved in the City. Oh, wow. Well, first of all, thank you. You're I'm welcome. so honored. I'm honored to be here. Mm-hmm. I'm so proud of you for thank stepping you. out and creating this platform. Um, I started Saved in the City seven, uh, 12 years ago. So it's been oh, 12 I didn't years. That. Yeah, I was 24 years okay. old and I was a 24 year old just trying to figure it out. Mm-hmm. Um, I had been engaged. I was actually living in the Bahamas, mm-hmm. getting ready to get married, and my engagement fell through and mm-hmm. I was devastated. Stated. So sure. I moved back to the States. I was heartbroken. Um, at the time, I felt like a lot of my worth came from relationships. Sure. And so I was just rediscovering who I was. And I was at a pretty low place. And I noticed that even though I was at a low place, I was attracting these women mm-hmm. and it were like, they wanted something from me, but I'm like, I don't have anything to give you all. I'm going through my own situation. Mm-hmm. But it was in that place where I realized so many other women were going through things, whether it was a breakup or whether there was something going on in their life or, and it was in that space, I realized women need a place. Like we need a place where no one's trying to fix us or tell us what to do, but we just need a place where we can connect mm-hmm. and have support for one another. And so it was in that like low place where I recognized other women were going through things and I said let me create something didn't know it was going to become what it's become Mm -hmm. but I asked my boss at the time I was working at a university slow down (laughs) if I could use a building use a room (laughs) what you'll find is that sometimes I need a pregnant pause okay let's go hold on a second (laughs) let's go you were working at a university I was working at a university while you were seeing something else yes you want to preach right there? Or I no? mean, I'm just, I'm just telling you the story. Y'all get what y'all need. But yeah, I was, um, I had moved back. Uh, it was probably about six months into me moving back. You wow. gotta think, I, I thought I was just gonna be a little housewife, you know. So I moved back to no, the states. No, you're not gonna do these gems. Wait a minute. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> I'm sorry. Is this, is this for you? Have had an interview where they be like, hold on a second. Oh, is that go a thing? ahead. It's a thing. Okay. 
You thought you were going to be what? I thought I was going to be a good housewife, Chris. Good like, housewife. yes. Okay. And so when I was there, I pretty much would wake up, whatever he, you know, but there was, because I had just graduated from college. So I was trying to find myself and mm-hmm. a, I was trying to adapt my life to what he, what his life was and what he wanted for my life to be. Mm-hmm. And so I was just going with the flow and then things just didn't work out. And um, I ended up moving back home and it was like, I was starting all over again. And mm-hmm. then I got this job. And so I took the job reluctantly. Gotta take, no, she got to take, no, got And pay? when I got the job is when I'm low, I'm at this place. And that's when I realized, wait, there are other women going through something similar like that I'm going through. And that's where I got the idea to create a space. I didn't know what it was going to look like. I didn't know what it was going to be, but they were coming and looking. And so I'm like, okay, well, let me just, let's just go upstairs. Like, and that's when I asked my boss if I could use a room upstairs at my job. And that was uh, September 15th. There gotta be a pin somewhere. 2011. <laughs> December 15th, 2011. Mm-hmm. Uh, y'all, are y'all writing this? <laughs> no, this sound like the blueprint. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that's how we started. So I love to share that story with women because- Don't be alarmed, this is a pregnant pause. Yeah. That, that was a lot to digest. Mm-hmm. You heard that story before. Yeah. I never heard it. Wow. I've heard that story before. It's taking me out. I'm freaking out. He left you at the altar. Mm-hmm. Is it okay to talk about mm-hmm. that a little bit? Absolutely. You're not the first person I heard say this. Absolutely. What What does that look like? Well, for me, for my situation, I thought I wanted one thing mm-hmm. out of life. And even in the context of our relationship, I made a lot of promises. You know, he was older. Okay. Uh, he was about nine or 10 years older than me. So he was ready, like, you know, to settle down. He was ready to, okay, this is what I'm going to do. This is, and I thought that's what I wanted as well. Oh, wait a minute. Sis. Okay. Cause I bet you I got something else to tell you. I got something else to tell you. I got something else to tell you. Cause Jesus. I already know you're real and your audience is real. So let me give you some backdrop on this relationship. Don't defend yourself though. Okay. Not for me. Okay. But Not I think me. this is important. Okay. Okay. A part of the story. And I think this will help others. Okay. <clears throat> so I met this individual when mm-hmm. I was a freshman in college. I was going from my freshman year to my sophomore year of college. Okay. So my background was graphic design and, and art. So, <laughs> Clearly. yes. So I, I was going back home to Nashville that summer and I was looking for an internship. Mm-hmm. So I told my mom, I'm like, you know, I'm excited to be in school now. I want to mm-hmm. be a des- designer. I want to get more experience. So she said, well, there's this black owned nail tech that's really popular in the city. She just rebranded and you should figure out who did her stuff. In, in Nashville. In Nashville. Yeah, okay. back home. And I said, okay, well, can you get the information? Well, he was over and owned the marketing firm that done that did this lady's branding for her nail shop. Mm-hmm. So I ended up calling, like, hey, I'm a young college student and you know, I, you know, I'm looking for an internship. He was like, okay, well, you know, no problem. So I'm thinking it's like a, you know, a big old marketing studio, you know. So Got it. he's okay. on music role. So I, I, you know, my first day on my internship, I go he's on to music role. If you're in, in Nashville. In Nashville, Got it. Got yeah. It. And so I get there, it's just he and I in the office. So I'm like, oh, okay. I'm not thinking anything about it. You know, I'm like excited just for the opportunity to work and to serve and, you know, just to learn. And so from there is when our working relationship started. And then from got it, you see some. I'm, I'm, uh, you I'm you know I'm in the, the music industry. Ye- I was know. nervous. I was nervous. I was in the room alone. That music yeah. row. I said, oh, <laughs> no, 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 no. I said, like, wait, wait a minute. Who is this? Show. <laughs> So, yeah, so that's how I uh, initially met him mm-hmm. was by working with him. So I didn't I wasn't looking for, you know, this to become what it eventually became. Mm-hmm. It was honestly me looking for an opportunity to develop as a designer. Right. Wow. So that's where it started. So the internship ended and I ended up going back to Alabama. That's where I went to school. I love Alabama. Yeah. Do you like Alabama? So, yeah, I do. OK, I do really like Alabama. So I ended up um, going back to school and he reached out to me while I was at school. Mm -hmm. Now I have to give you a little bit more backdrop. I love your stories. Okay. So more backdrop was Mm -hmm. he didn't tell me at the time, but when I initially met him, he was engaged to be married, but he never told me that. Now at the time, I guess it wasn't necessarily because there wasn't anything 
Right, that's right. Drink your tea. That's it. That's it. Because at the time, I did not. I mean, it wasn't anything to, you know, for there to be a conversation about. Well, when he, you he spent the a, block, you didn't have a crush, like no, not not initially. Okay. Now, when he spent the block, what's that mean? That means, um, hey, how you doing? Spent the block, and I'm like, hey, write that down. yeah, spent the block. Spent he spent the block, the block. and um, I'm like, hey, how's everything going? That's when he started to express, you know, that he had interest. After he spent the block, yeah. So does she still have a rock? So, so let me. So let me. Oh, sorry. Let me give you. Okay. Sorry. So, sorry. So by this time, you know, I'm in school. I'm really active in school. I'm not really, you know, considering this is something spent serious, block. right? Got it. Okay. That so helps me. Got time it. is going by. I ended up. I'm like, well, we'll get together. You know, when um I come back home. We come back home. I ended up going to the office. I see wedding invitations. How I found out he was engaged was there were wedding invitations at the office. He wasn't there and I ended up going mm -hmm. and I found wedding invitations for his upcoming marriage. That you did not know that about. That I did not know about. Okay. Right? I'm listening. Right. So I confront him about it and I'm like, hey, I found these wedding invitations. You know, is there something you want to share? He downplays it. He's like, oh, it's nothing. You're getting married. <laughs> like, like, and you're expressing interest in me, but it's nothing. And so from that time, I think I was a sophomore then, we ended up stopped talking. Okay. About my junior year in college, he comes back around. Mm. At this time, he's married. And I'm like, well, what what are you calling me? What what are you calling me for? And he continued to pursue me while he was married, while I was in college. What would you refer to your mindset mm -hmm. as um, at that time? When I think of you, and tell me, if, mm -hmm. shut me up at any time. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. This, I'm new to this. This mm -hmm. is like day three. Come on, let's go. Day three. What? Uh, I'm asking for the succulents. Mm -hmm. Okay, for the succulent audience. She said, mm -hmm. I meant the seculars. Mm -hmm. So I'm from the succulent world. I see the word saved in the city. Great yes. play on words, by the way. Thank you, girl. For real. <laughs> right? Were you saved in the city when this was happening? Absolutely not. Oh, why you didn't tell me that first? I'm like, you know why I didn't tell you that? I know you had discernment. You know why I didn't tell you that? Why? Because I think a lot of times mm -hmm. people think when they see where a woman is now, mm -hmm. she's always been there. Mm -hmm. And I, what I love about my faith journey, right? And I talk about this all the time, is that I didn't come up in a church background. Mm -hmm. I didn't come up with this perfect past of like, I've always been a good girl and I've always made the best decisions and I've always had it together. I was a really broken girl. Mm -hmm. I was very insecure. I thought my worth came from someone choosing me, even if that meant I was second. I thought all of these things, I didn't think I was enough. I didn't think I was all of these things. And what I think is so phenomenal about my story and the story of Saved in the City is God picked this girl that found herself fast forward in my story in an adulterous situation to fast forward to getting in a whole nother country and oh, hijacking my life <laughs> and saying, I have need of you. Did you say adulterous? Yes. Day three. What? Mm -hmm. What what do you mean? Yeah, so as we're continuing with the story. The, the invitations, you confront him. Yes. You, what right there. Yes. So there was, it was, uh, I think it was, no, I think it was homecoming okay. of my junior year. So, mm -hmm. and um, I I was on the dance team and he ended up calling. Now, keep in mind, I'm like kind of pushing them off. But, you know, you know, sometimes women, we're like, uh-uh, but entertaining at the same time. So, you know, I'm kind of doing that. Nobody loves me. And, I have no idea. You know, you know, like, you know how we entertain. We say we leave me alone, but it's like, oh, you know, we'll call a little bit, you know, that type of thing. So I'm leaving dance practice. And um, he says, I'm here. He had drove to the city. And I'm like, okay, you know, because at this time we had not talked in a few months. And so I remember going, I'm like, well, where are you? He's like, well, I saw you, you know, come out, you know, your dorm and all this. So I go in the car to meet him and he's pretty much like, hey, you're going to be in a relationship with me. At this point, it's like really not a choice. You're going to be in a relationship with me. And I felt as if, I needed to oblige to what he was saying. And so from that day on, we were in a relationship in spite of the situation he already had with his wife. I'm sorry. How does that look? Give us a picture. I, he he comes up in a car. Yes. 
to where you're going to school. Yes. Because there's a school girl watching mm-hmm. right now. I just kind of want to give her a picture. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You walk out of the front of the school. Yes, he's in the car. He's in I the car. The, I get in the car. You get in the car. I get in the car, right? Because I'm not, you know, I'm not really thinking, you know, like, okay, I'm a little caught off guard because I'm like, you just showed up down here and you didn't say anything. You've never been here before. You know, it was kind of weird, but I wasn't thinking anything until once I got in the car mm. and he was like, hey, so this is what we're going to do. You're, you're going to, we're going to be in a relationship mm. together. And because I was so vulnerable, you know, at that time and. I mean, so many things. I'm 20, you know, 2021 20, at the time. I'm like, okay, you know, I obliged to that. And that became a, a part of my story. And my journey went from there. So by the time I graduated, mm-hmm. he had gotten a divorce, right? I'm sorry. We didn't, I didn't a, <laughs> I when did he get married? So back. He, he didn't tell me when y'all got married. So he had already got, he, between that freshman year and that time, somewhere, remember I had found the invitation. Sis, I remember what you said. Yes. I just didn't hear the marriage part. Yes. You came out of high school. Uh Uh-huh. We didn't. Listen, as long as you want to stay, it's fine. Let's go. I don't want you to feel like, you know, she got to go to sleep. (laughs) Let's talk about it. I promise. We don't have to go through high school, but Mm -hmm. I'm seeing you, you just... Aging backwards, as mm-hmm. far as I know, mm-hmm. I just mentioned today, but you're gorgeous. Thank you. Stunning. You, you come out of high school, you go to college. Graphic, that's like the, everybody's favorite major right there yeah. in political science, no comment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? You didn't tell us about freshman year. We could talk yeah. about it later for if you sure, want to. For sure, for sure. But then you go, what's the one after freshman? Uh, sophomore year. Okay. And then yeah. you said junior. My junior year. Is where you're looking for your internship. Mm-hmm. Well, so, well my, between my freshman year and my sophomore year is when I was looking for the internship. She called that him, summer. This is year. That's year one for uh-huh. me because that's where his story that's starts. Yeah. Mm-hmm. When did he get married? You work so you worked for the my, whole. My, between my sophomore year and my junior year. Okay. It's when the that all of that transpired. One and a half years. By my junior year is when the situation I just described to you, it went down. Shh, shh, shh. Give me a second. The invitation is year two. Mm-hmm. Okay. He gets married. How many weeks after that? I'm not. I can't remember when the date was. But see, I went back to college. Are so, we at year three or was there anything in between? No. So nothing in between. Okay. And then it's like, pick back up. Junior year, year three. Got it. And that's when it. I'm in a full-fledged adulterous relationship by year three. And you don't know what happened between year two and three. Year, year, it's year two and year three. I know. I knew he had gotten married, and I'm just in college doing my thing. Right here. So yeah. Can we take a pregnant pause? Absolutely. Wait a second. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna come come back. Two and a half, three. Hey, boo. You know, what's up? I'm outside. Mm-hmm. I'm from New York. Those are fighting words. Yeah. Okay. I, I just want, I, cause we, we just met. Mm-hmm. Somebody would have had a gun. It was me. Mm-hmm. I'm secular. Right. You get into the car. Mm-hmm. Says, was it daytime, nighttime? Oh, it was nighttime. Yeah, it was nighttime. You I know mean. how this sounds because you've told the story before. <laughs> it's nighttime. Yeah. This is riveting, but it's your real life. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Just, you're in the car year three. What happens next? So that's the night where we officially are in a relationship. From because that he night said forward. so. Mm-hmm. What does agreement look like? Hmm. We comply. At that time, that's what agreement That's what looked it looked like, like for I'm me. Listening. Yep. I'm listening. And so from then on, um, from my junior year to my senior year, even to I graduated, we were in a relationship. Mm-hmm. Of course, it was like a, you know, a long distance type of thing. And again, I was I was very active in college. So, mm-hmm. you know, when I would come home or, you know, travel back and visit and things like that, that's when, you know, we would like really be in the relationship. Um, but between I don't know exactly when. That's the part I don't get. He was married here. He came to pick you up from school mm-hmm. here. When was it an adulterous relationship? You oh, said he got he was, divorced. Yeah, he got divorced by my senior year, but we're talking about my junior year. All right, so listen, listen. So. We, we trying to, we trying to, <laughs> we trying to tell you it's not that bad over here on this side. <laughs> How long was you in an adulterous relationship? Like uh, just half of my pinky from finger. My, uh, you know, from my junior year to my um, senior year to once I graduated. So I'll say about two years. It's not that bad. But I remember. But you know what was bad? Tell me. I was a part of the reason why another sister's heart was broken. Wow. 
that's the heaviest thing on your heart from that whole story. One of them. I remember his wife calling me mm. and asking me. I'm ready. You know, like, is there something going on between you all? That's when it hit home for you. And I remember not telling the truth. Oh, my God. So for, you know, I know different people measure, you know, like, oh, that's not it for me. Mm-hmm. And just the woman I've developed into and my morals now and my yeah. character now and how much I honor family and relationships and love and marriage now. And what I cause pain for another sister, I would never want to put someone through that. But I did that. And that was something that I've had to own. Mm. And it's a big part of my story. So. Mm -hmm. I know. Dang, bro. Yeah. Come back, sis. Somebody else went through that, too. Yeah. But you don't know her. Mm -hmm. You have your own way of dealing with it. Mm -hmm. How did you deal With the pressure, this is pressure of, I hurt another woman. Mm -hmm. When was God introduced into your life where it was like, we at year four and a half. Mm -hmm. When was God introduced? When when we decided we were going to get married. Once he got a divorce. You you know it's your fault for starting the story at the end, right? (laughs) Wow. And when that engagement fell apart is when I came into a relationship with God. Wow. Because I was so low. You have to think like I've gone through all of this with this person, <laughs> you know, I done, so then it's not where, And I was just in such a low and depressed place. And that's when I was like, OK, I have to try something. I have to do something. So I had heard about God. I had heard about, you know, a relationship with Jesus and all of that. But I didn't know if that was for me because there were people, you know, of course, you know, my family had talked about it and I didn't want whatever I, the path I chose, I wanted it to be my own path and not because, oh, someone else had done it, or this is what my mama said, or this is what my dad, you know, that. And so I just was like, Hey, I'm at a low place. I feel like I have nothing else to lose. So let me try this. And if it doesn't work for me, I'm going to go try something else. And so it was like a setup. <laughs> what? So what'd you try first? I tried. Well, I started doing a lot of research. Okay. I'm very transparent. I, I think people, because I preach and I'm in ministry and stuff like that now. I had no idea until just now. Yeah. So I love to like come from this angle with this, Mm -hmm. because I think a lot of times when people look at, you know, if you're a preacher, if you're in ministry, they, cause I looked at it like that. I covered up my tech. Well, most of them. Well, well, you know, I think it's important to hear these type of stories because a lot of times in our minds, we think, oh, ministers or preachers or they look a certain type of way. You're right. And that's the reason why I didn't want to accept my call because I'm like, I I never saw anyone who looked like me who was so honest about what they've been through. Why didn't you want to accept your call? I didn't want to accept my call to ministry and to this, this what I do now because I did not see anyone who looked like me. I thought everyone who was in church or who was a Christian, they looked a certain type of way. They weren't edgy. They didn't have shaved hair. They didn't have the type of raw stories that we have. And so I just thought they were like, okay, no, that's not me. <laughs> like, that's not me. So I had a hard time when I really felt like a call, you know, to what I do now to say, wait, are you sure you're talking about me? I was the girl that, that was messing with old girl. The guy in the car I was, was the chick me. that like, was- are you sure you're talking? <laughs> Like, are you sure you're calling me because I got some stuff? He was like, come back, sis. (laughs) Come back. You think the Lord says come back, sis? Oh, absolutely. And so when I realized in that season of my life, when I said, okay, I'm going to, I looked up, I looked up being Buddhist. I looked up Muslim. I looked up so many things. I'm like, okay, I ain't looking for something. And so I can now understand what you mean by you were looking for something. Yes, I was looking for something, but I didn't know what I was looking for. I understand now. Right. I'm looking, I'm searching. Like I have this hole in my heart. I've done checklists. They told me to go to college. I did that. They told me to get a job. I did that. They told me to be the good girl. I did all of that, but I'm still sad. I'm still empty. So there has to be something else. And so it was in that search where I said, okay, let me try this God Jesus thing. I'm going to try it. Holy pause. Let's go. Try what? I said, I want to try having a relationship with God. I want to, I want to explore what I hear people talk about with Jesus. Like he was on my list. My list. (laughs) 
My you list. My did list. you eat, did you did you read Eat Pray Love during this time? Um, no, okay. I did not okay. read that. Um, it did, it's not like a book. I mean, a movie or something. It came into a okay, movie. yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I watched the movie. Yeah. Um. So yeah. So that's how my journey began. Um, we at the beginning still with my with my faith journey with me giving my God my life oh, to my Christ. Gosh, because I heard like forty nine journeys. Yeah. In one, in one lifetime. Mm-hmm. And I think that's the beauty of it, right? I think it's the beauty of it. Mm-hmm. You look like the epitome of beautiful. Thank you, sis. Period. This is what they mean when they say, you know, God changed my life. <laughs> and I don't look like what I've been through. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah. That's, you're like the definition of that. For sure. That's so amazing. Thank you. I'm serious. I hope that helps somebody. Uh, It did. <laughs> <laughs> I don't use I don't do good faces. Yeah. I'm from New York. We don't really do good faces. That definitely helps somebody. I'm grateful. Help me right now. Mm-hmm. Kidding me. Yeah. Okay. Where do you go from I'm accepting you use this term this God Jesus thing? Is that how you said it? Mm-hmm. I'm gonna check out this God Jesus thing mm-hmm. t- to like t- let's go two years. Yeah. I promise I have all the time. Mm-hmm. I promise. Um, so I wanted to pursue a relationship with God to see if that was for me. Mm-hmm. And so I, I remember like, okay, they say I've heard that you're supposed to like pray. You know, I, this is this is just like how open I was and like how well, you hung out with Buddhists. Yeah, you know, so I'm like, okay, I'm supposed to pray. You know, so I'm thinking like, okay, I should probably find a church. You know, so I'm like kind of checking off a list of like where'd you get try this list? Things. I mean, just things I had heard over, you know, over the years, you Got know. It. And so I started doing those things. I my hairstylist at mm-hmm. the time, I was like, how do I pray? You know, I just asked her one day when she was doing my hair, like, can you teach me how to pray? And she's like, well, just start talking to God in the shower. And it felt really weird at first. And so I started learning how to pray. Um, I ended up finding, you know, a church, you know, and I'm like, okay, well, let how me start did you going do to that? church. I started asking people, like, you asked where people. do you, like, where do you go to church, okay. you know? And so um, I started like going to different churches. I would go in late, leave early, you know, but just trying to just fill it out Same. Got to it. see if it worked for me. And um, I ended up getting connected to a couple of they're some of my closest friends now, mm-hmm. and they were into ministry. Mm-hmm. And I couldn't figure out why they had become my friends. And they were really cool because I thought everyone in ministry were like nuns. I thought they were perfect. I thought they had the Bible memorized. So they, you know, um, I was working for one of them. But we became friends and they're like, won't you help us? We're starting a young adult Bible study. You're really creative. You know, won't you do our flyers? And I'm like, I love creativity for sure. What are y'all doing? And so I ended up starting to help them with their Bible study for young college students. And from there is when I fell in love with I can use my gifts like I can be creative and wait, like my life is kind of changing with this. And this is positive and it's beautiful. And like, and that's when I really fell in love with not only like, I want to have a relationship with God, but then I want to use my creativity to help other people get to know God. And that's how that part of the journey started. I want to have a relationship with God yeah. and I want to use my creativity to mm-hmm. help others. To help others. Yeah. I want to use my creativity to help others. Yes. I want it somebody who's trying to figure that out right mm-hmm. now. Mm-hmm. I'm creative. Yeah. And I want to use that to help people. Absolutely. I'm creative and I want to use that to creative, want, use, help. Creative. Wow. Let me speak to the creative piece. I've been creative my whole life, but I had no one to give me language for my creativity. That's why we're friends. And so it tormented me. Like my gifts used to torment me. Because everybody else would be outside playing. I'm in the house dreaming. Like I've been a dreamer my whole life. My parents couldn't give me language for no one. You know, so my cousin's looking at me crazy, you know. So for a long time, I couldn't understand why do I like what I like? Why do I do what I do? You know? And so for anybody who may be listening and you may feel that way, like I'm creative and I don't feel like I fit in. There is a place for you. And when I took 
you know, the good, the bad, the indifferent, all of what I've been sharing, when I started to embrace my story is really when I started to figure, figure out, oh, this, this is how I can use my story. This is how I can use my creativity. And this is why God has made me this way, because there are other people that are like me, too. And as I show up, then that's going to tell them, hey, you got a place, too. So, yeah. So I'm so proud of you. Thank you. That wasn't easy. Yeah. Oh, absolutely not. Nothing of purpose is easy. Is that true? Yeah, you know, I think for me, I can only talk to my journey. There was a lot of things. It, it, I wouldn't say it was like a stripping, but I feel like I've been in a refining process for quite some time. Um, I didn't have the right view of myself. So God had to like clear out all of the the dirt and the things that blurred me from being able to see myself. There were things in my character that needed to be developed, then integrity and confidence and all of those things. So I feel like for me, I had to go through some hard things, some messy things, some chaotic things, so I could fully see my beauty and the beauty in my story. So yeah, there is some some hardness, some things that you're going to go through, but I feel like it doesn't always have to be that way when you embrace your process of who you're becoming and then you get to the place like now where you can tell your story and everything is not hard anymore but I went through some hard stuff to get me to where I am now what does it mean to have a yoga retreat and be you to have a yoga retreat and be you I'm not sure I'm not as familiar with yoga retreats so uh, I got a question about you doing retreats what does yeah. that look like and okay, self yeah. self love and self care what does that look like for sure for somebody like yourself for sure oh mm-hmm. yeah so I started these retreats um, that I would do every year. Mm -hmm. They actually started for college students. So, yeah, when I first started Saved in the City, I started it on a college campus. So that's where I worked. Mm -hmm. And so um, at the time, a lot of the college students, they didn't want to go back home for college because a lot of them came from backgrounds and situations and uncle had touched them when they were younger, you know, all of those things. And so I'm like, well, let me create an alternative for them where we can go away and do something positive and expose them. And so it it ended up starting that way. And then over the years it grew and then, you know, auntie started coming and sister girls started coming and Mm -hmm. executives started coming. And so it's grown into, we do a beach retreat every year. Mm -hmm. And so we get together. It's like a four day retreat. We have uh, sessions, we have talks, we have pajama parties and it's just an escape for women a retreat for women to be able to come to. how can we get involved with that how can we be yeah. a part how can we come hang for sure the next one is april the 18th okay through the 21st it's going to be in daytona beach florida mm-hmm. and um uh, any lady that's interested can go to our website save in the city online.org mm-hmm. your register. website is so well did you design it i did it's time for a revamp but i did oh i can't tell i think it's so fun <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah, that's how they saved do in the, the city, city online.org. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. So this is called when you when you come through what you just shared with us today mm-hmm. and you create what you've created, are you proud of yourself? Girl, yes. Let's talk about that for okay. a second. To answer your question, I am so proud of myself. Mm-hmm. But I haven't always been. Mm -hmm. Right. Because when you go through some of the things I've gone through, I was full of a lot of shame. Shame. I was full of what shame, shame where I thought I was what I had done. So because I had created pain for others, I associated myself with what I felt like wasn't the best decisions that I had made in my life. So you tackle that with not feeling worthy and feeling inadequate and not feeling enough. Just had a lot going on in there, right? And so for a long time, I didn't see my value. I didn't see anything to be proud of. So to grow to the place now where I'm like, I'm proud of you, Brittany, whether you accomplish another thing or not. I'm just proud of the woman that you are. That's what you can Um, say to yourself. I I say that to myself now. Mm -hmm. When I started going to therapy, I started going to therapy about six, seven years ago. Got it. And it was in that place where we started to unpack a lot of stuff 
where I wanted to stop saving the CD. I'm like, Lord, I'm jacked up. I feel like I was so jacked up. So year six <laughs> into saving the city is when you start going to I therapy. I started going to therapy, yep. I'm sorry. You had the job. You, you came from college. Mm-hmm. You got this job mm-hmm. inside of a college. Yeah. Then upstairs, they're like, go upstairs, you can start it. Yeah. You stayed there for six years before you. Yes, before I went started therapy. Were you making money at this time? Uh, with Save in the City? Nope. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. No, not in yet. the city. Mm-mm, not, not yet. Is that why? You, what were you doing for those six years mm-hmm. to prepare Saved in the City to what it became? Right. So during the day, I was working mm-hmm. because a lot of us have to do that sometimes. Mm-hmm. We mm-hmm. have to work during the day. I'm on a job now and build our visions at night. So mm-hmm. that's what I was doing. Uh, so I was working during the day, and every week I was having a, a meetup. Got it. Every week for six years. There was no cameras. There was no social media. Mm -hmm. There was no, hey, y'all, look at what we're doing. I was just serving. I was just giving. Um, So about about year six or seven, my timelines, I'm getting older. It's okay. We just just learned it with you today. It started to grow where I did transition off of my job because it was growing. By that time, we were in five cities, you know, we were having different meetups in different cities. We were having conferences. And so we were like, hey, somebody got to run this thing. Mm -hmm. And so I'm like, well, who about to run it? They're like, ma'am, you're the only one. (laughs) Sorry, can we stop for a second? Can this be two episodes? Because this part is very informational. You need two episodes. Okay, yes, ma'am. You got a story? Come back, (laughs) y'all. You got a story? Yeah. And then you have a blueprint. This is true. You got to charge for this, first of all. (laughs) I, I'm second. I'm going to get you to the bed. Uh, thank you you got to char- charge me later. Like, I'll give you, I'll give, I'll give, we'll do exchange cash apps. Thanks for coming. Come back, sis. This is the moment you've been waiting for.